Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, standalone video for me today. Got a little context on this match. So about a year ago in my first UTR session, I lost to this chick 6-0, 6-0. Literally the worst match of my career. And Caleb ended up playing her after I played her. Uh, there's a video here, you can see it in the description. Um, and he ended up losing to her in, uh, uh, I think he took the first set and lost in a tie break. Uh, but anyway, she didn't know that he knew me. So he asked her what she thought about me after the match, like my game, you know. Obviously, she thought I was a stud, uh, but she was like, yeah, uh, Ben had all the, the, the gear and stuff, but he wasn't very good. I, I don't feel like he should be in my division. I, I'm a I'm a UTR three. I should be playing better people than him or a UTR four or whatever. So fast forward a year. I'm in the same division with her again, and I I'm, I want some revenge and my game plan. I've got a couple things I really want to do tomorrow. I just talked about it with Birdman. We just had a session. Uh, I got rained out, unfortunately, but that means I'll be fresher for tomorrow. First thing I want to do, I think I'm going to serve first. Uh, I need that scoreboard pressure on her. And uh, next thing, I want to be more calm. I'm not, I don't play better when I let my emotions get in the way of things, when I start muttering to myself on court, kind of like blah, 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 talking to myself. Like, that doesn't make me play better. So I need to be calm. I need to weather, sto weather the storm when I'm feeling anything internally. My scoreline prediction, I think I'm going to go with 6-3 me. 4-6 her, and then in a tie break, I think I will take her 10-6. to six. So that's my scoreline prediction. Let's check out the footage and see what happened. Also, like the video, subscribe. Caleb just had his firstborn son, and he hopes to one day quit his job and do YouTube full-time. So do him a favor, do me a favor, do, do his firstborn son, Moose, a favor and subscribe to the video. All right, first things first, uh, scoreboard is just gonna be the game score at the time the point was being played. Uh, I didn't have the patience to comb through all the footage that I had selected and find the actual point score, but I was able to keep track of the games. Um, I was able to get the uh, early hold, which is when you've been serving as bad as I have, that is a huge moral victory. And you'll see her serve right there. It doesn't have a ton of pace, but man, did it have some tricky spin, especially on the ad side because she was slicing it and it was breaking away from you. So definitely kept you on your toes. You'll see in this game, um, she's pretty aggressive with changing direction of the ball and taking the, taking the shot for an angle winner. Uh, and that was true at the baseline, if she came to the net, if I came to the net, if anything about that was suboptimal and she had a, a window, she was gonna pounce on it and really attack the ball. And I wish I had played tennis more like that, you know, in, in this point and throughout the rest of the match, you're gonna see a lot of me just hitting, hitting back to her in the middle or going cross court and not taking a ton of risks in changing the direction of the ball. That was sort of my strategy because I felt that in a longer exchange, I was gonna have the upper hand. I felt like I was more consistent than her. Didn't pan out on that point, but I felt all in all that my ground strokes were a little stronger than hers and that maybe, maybe I was a little more patient than her. She, was, she would take unnecessary risks and you know, sort of give, give me some free points. That was a great ace right there, but I followed it up with two double faults. So I was definitely starting to feel some of the pressure here, but I didn't panic. Um, I just wanted to get out of this game alive. And that led to, I mean, I wasn't being super aggressive in the game anyway. So I just had to keep hitting it back down the middle, which, you know, I know that's pushing, that's crap. I don't like it when people play tennis like that against me, but I got impatient there in the end, overcooked it, coughed up, uh, coughed up a break myself. But I was okay with it because her serve wasn't entirely the most formidable thing and I felt pretty good about my ability to break her again, which I did. Um, and this is just gonna be, it's crazy. It's a little bit of deja vu. Only two aces of the match started off like that, followed up by two double faults. <laughs> like what a way to start a game. Uh, not a huge confidence builder if you're looking to, to build confidence in your serve. But this game, I did, I guess I did learn some lessons, even though she passed me right there. I was able to hold on, even coughing up that massive advantage. Uh, I think it was a really long game. We went back and forth to, from Deuce for about eight minutes. Very, very long. Uh, another double fault there. Actually, oh yeah, this is to start the second set. So I took the first set and then 
on my first game had two double faults coughed up an early break. I can't say I was panicking uh, because, like I said, her serve was pretty easy. Uh, I talked to, like, her second serve, I could just tee off. Um, it was sitting up for me and... But like I said, she was also really aggressive. I bring her to the net. Of course, I was just standing there. So that was, I don't, I don't know what I should do there, but like not just stand there, that's for sure. That was that breaking ad serve I mentioned earlier. Uh, and it was funny in the, uh, in the changeovers, ooh, dirty winner. In the changeovers, she was super nice. She was talking to me a lot, wanted to like hear about my life, um, just being very pleasant overall. And almost every time it would have been after I just got broken. So I would have, I was standing there just like internally like screaming and trying to be calm and have a nice conversation. I'm like, lady, I don't want to have a chit chat with you. I want to get on to the next game so I can crush you. Um, so I don't know if she knew uh, how badly I wanted this win. I did talk to her after the match a little bit about it, but that was long, pretty good play there. And this second set, she definitely ramped up her, uh, maybe she didn't ramp up her aggression, but she became more consistent. And we had a lot more points like this with a lot more heavy hitting, even though my forehand, my low forehands, um, pretty wonky. I have no choice but to brush up on it because of this wild, extreme Western grip that I have. But when the ball sits up higher like this, I can take more aggression on it. So if you're playing me and you want to crush me, just hit me low balls. Uh, but higher balls, I feel better about being able to inject pace into that. Like I said, just teeing off on her second serve. If it just sits up a little higher, I was able to have a crack at it. But in the second set, my uh, inability to hold serve continued. Uh, spoiler, I'm pretty sure I lost this game. Uh, this might have been a longer point. Oh, yeah. But I wasn't losing off of double faults. I was losing off of her winning the points or me messing up the strokes. I remember in the second set, uh, after all a slew of double faults, I took a ton off my serve. I wasn't hitting my serve as hard as I can, and I was just hitting right at her body. I wasn't trying to go down, like, down the tee or out wide. Um, I, I just took my ground stroke strategy and started implementing that into the serve, just being as safe as possible. Right, not the best of drop shots, and yep, she just eats me for breakfast. That serve, the my my backhand slice. I will say this: it served me well this game. Uh, I had a mess up earlier, and that was an absolute shank. That was a rim job, and she laughed at it like, "Wow, great point!" But I, I apologized because I knew exactly what it was, um, and it wasn't. While it was intentional, it was a miss hit, but. The luck, the luck was on my side. Oh, <laughs> right after I was talking about how great my slice was. Just my backhand side overall. I felt more confident with it than my forehand side. Maybe because my forehand side, I, it's, it's a less aggressive stroke. And I'm more spinning it back into play. It lands short a lot of the time. And my backhand stroke, it's a little spinnier too. But I feel better about being able to hit it deep. Um, in this game right here, her serving at 4-3, I had some freaking great shots. That was that was amazing. That felt like just, I felt like a, the, a king of the world after implementing something like that. She's picking on my backhand and I'm, I'm up to the task. So she goes to the forehand side, right, down the middle again. Really my only choice there with the ball that low in my grip, and she overcooks it. She was a little frustrated herself. You know, this is the business end of the set, so she's feeling it. Boop. Nice. I was feeling good about that too. Bad return. I think this is going out. I realize it's not, and I'm there. Ooh. Decadent. An absolute delicacy. Honestly, that, that could have been an ace. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, right here. I had the opportunity to serve out the game. And I remember at one point, I think it might have been 
30-15. And I started thinking, holy crap, I'm two points away from winning. And I don't know if that got in my head because she definitely won this point. I, I don't know what opportunity I had there to put it away. But that double fault right there was definitely a little bit of nerves. And in the end, let's see what... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this net cord. Wow. That was unfortunate. But I put myself in that position. Um, Let's see if I can break her. Yeah, there wasn't even any great points in that game. Uh, I broke her. Like I I think I broke her to love. So got the win I wanted in the end. Super stoked about it. A really really good moral victory uh, to... And, and an actual victory.